Well, good evening, everyone, and thank you for tuning in, and welcome to Live with Sandra V. Show. This is actually our uh, 45th episode. Of course, my name is Sandra Van Sickle, and Ken is usually sometimes here with me, and I don't think he's going to make it tonight, because somebody's got to work, right? Not everybody can just hang around and sew with scraps, <laughs> but anyway, we are here on Tuesday night from 7 to 8 p.m., Eastern Standard Time. I know I put out Eastern Daylight Time all the time because that's what I call it. But it's, my oldest daughter told me it's Eastern Standard Time. Uh, what do you guys call it? Daylight Standard Time? Whatever. East Coast, right? Anyway, we are here uh, usually on Tuesday nights unless we're traveling, which we do a lot. And our goal is to inspire, educate, and promote others within the industry who share our same vision. So, and tonight, I am really excited and I'm glad you're here because we are going to make this stylish, can you hear that? Snappy <laughs> iPad holder. And you can also, uh, after tonight, make smaller versions of it as well. So you don't always have to make iPad, but you can make a phone, um, or just any other little makeup case, whatever you prefer. But let me say hello to everyone real quick as you're coming in here. And I'd ask that you go ahead and share it out uh, to others so that they can join in. I don't know how many times I hear, oh, I missed it, I missed it. And um, a lot of times if we just share it out, people will get the notification. So let me see who's here. Uh, I wish they would make my screen bigger so I don't have to look down at my iPad. But hey, Sharon, I saw that you came in. You were the first one who came in tonight. That's good to have you here. And Kathy Tucker. Kathy, you stick around because I'm going to talk about you a little bit later. So don't go anywhere. And Jenny. Hey, Jenny. It's great to have you here tonight. I was thinking about you the other day. I saw your little logo come up. And you made, it made me think about you and wondered how you were doing. And Donna. Hey, Donna. How are you doing this evening? And Robin, the very talented Robin, is in the house, too. Where you're in the house, you're out there. Um, but definitely, as you come in, um, say hello to one another. Uh, give me some thumbs up or thumbs down or whatever, if you like or don't like what I have to share. <laughs> but it is, it's great to have all of you here um, each and every week. And I know that I've been doing uh, a little, a little bit of... Um, like using up our scraps and it's almost like a little DIY kind of uh, episodes but I really like to use up what we have here in the workroom and like I put out there in one of my posts that um, if we don't use all of our scraps by December 31st how about we all make like a pack that if we don't use all the scraps in the house that we purge so we'll get ready for next year <laughs> it's gonna be hard for some of us to do that right um, but that would be a nice goal, wouldn't it? But anyway, I, I'd like, you know, for us to use what we have. Um, and even though some of it may be like kind of DIY, but there are really um, some of the techniques that we use um, in some of these projects that we use in our workroom as well. And if it's not, you know, uh, something within the project, it might be some of the tools that we can use in our workroom and on a DIY project. And so like I said, tonight we're gonna to be using up scraps, but one of the other things that we're gonna be using, I don't know how people think of this, but you hear that snap? And you hear this snap? So guess what's in here? It is our, um, it is the tape measure. And so I was talking to somebody today, and Donna, it might have been you, and you said, you know, how many old um, tape measures do we have hanging around, and they've got a burr on them, or the end falls off, and they you know what I'm talking about, they roll up inside. So, but now we can use them. So that's what we're going to be doing tonight. So real quick, yep, Sharon, you said you have a lot, a lot of scrap. So, all right, we're going to jump right in. So I usually run late, don't like to run late, and I will be checking from time to time if you have questions or comments, say hello to each other, and ask away, and I'll stop every so often and come back and answer, all right? Uh, so I'm going to put this out of my way for right now, okay? 
you know, uh, the um, supplies that you need for this project, like I said, you know, number one is scraps, right? And the other, well, first of all, I'm getting ahead of myself. We'll talk about the supplies in a minute. What I really want to do is, is to show you a little bit more of a close-up of these two iPod holders, iPad hold, yeah, the holders um, that I have made already. And this one here, let me see if I can get a little bit close up here. Let's see what camera view. Here we go. So I'll move this one out of the way. I happen to make this one with some silk scraps. And this is a velvet. And if you can see this pattern, this was actually a sample uh, piece of fabric that I received from a vendor years ago. And I loved it so much and it really didn't go with anything. And of course, you know, when you get them, there's only one and they're almost the size of a, um, a fat quarter. So I've had it hanging around and actually it was, it was on its way out the door and I yanked it back and I thought there's something I love about it. I don't know what I'm going to do with it, but I'll think of something. And so this project came up and I said, this is perfect. So you can see here, I don't have a seam on the side. Um, it, because it completely wraps around and I happen to have this corally silk almost made it out the door to the trash pile this piece of velvet again it was on its way out I'm telling you girls I'm purging <laughs> and then I said okay you know what it goes I'm going to make an iPad holder out of it so and then here's another one that uh, I made up today again scraps uh, and this was just a piece of fabric. It was a scrap from something. I don't remember. And then I have this piece of suede. And I have had this suede, I don't know how long. I can't tell you, but it still had a little price tag sticker on it. And I guess I bought it because I loved the color. And then I don't know if you can see real close here, but I have these, these beads that I inserted into this particular holder. And... Uh, let me get that. I've had these beads forever. Um, and let me tell you how much I love these beads. That's how much I love these beads. That's how much I bought. And I have never, um, I have never used them. And so, again, when, I don't know how many people have tried to take these from me. And I've hoarded them. And I love them. So, um, so I've used them in this project, as you can see. And they just go nicely. So, then what I did was I added a little ribbon on the side, and this is a little D-ring, and this happens to be, is called um, a small swivel hook and D-ring. And so here is the little small swivel hook that I inserted into the little pouch. So I thought, um, you know, I, that I would show you some options that you have, and you can make a small snappy pouch as well as large ones and medium ones, whatever size that you want. And just put the tape measures inside. Pretty neat, huh? And so I figured with this, if you wanted to give away as a gift, um, and you wanted to just go ahead and hook them together, that the recipient could maybe put earbuds in here, or their keys, or whatever they want to do. So you have, you have options with what I'm gonna show you tonight. And you don't have to get um, fancy, but you can just make them just, uh, I don't want to say plain, but just, you know, just a nice iPad holder that you can give to somebody. Now, I do want to show you too with this little pouch, and you could do it with these if you didn't want to have an iPad holder, uh, is to, you, you know, you just kind of square off your, your corners. And if you all remind me whenever I make the one tonight, I'll try to remember to show you how I've done that. But it just kind of boxes out the bottom and makes it really cute, right? What do you think? So um, these are easy to make, number one. Number two, it's a great project to for kids. Put them to work. You know, if they're home on the weekends or in the evenings and you're in your workroom, say, you know what, put those devices down and let's make some iPad pouches, or holders, whatever you want to call them, for your teacher, you know, the uh, or a friend, because you know the holidays are coming, and we're going to be bogged down, and we're not going to have time to go out shopping, and we're going to think, you know what? I need a bunko gift. Um, I need that, 
you know, that little gift for church or the teacher or somebody, or even, you know, how many times do you have that one or two per people who you, you just don't know what to buy? And most people, even some of the elderly folks, I mean, a lot of times grandparents, you don't know how to buy, you can't buy for them because they have everything or they don't want anything. What about a pouch? I mean, a whole, I keep on a pouch, but you call it a holder. Or even, like I said, make something into a, a makeup bag. Use your imagination. You guys are pretty talented out there. But here's the thing. When you're getting ready to give one of these away, um, put your business card down in there. Uh, especially say it's going to go to Bunko or it's going to go to the school for a teacher, a Sunday school teacher, whatever. How many people out there really know what you do for a living? Right? A lot of people just think that maybe you're just a little home seller making pouches. <laughs> but no, you know, but they, they might not know that you make um, drapery for a living. So pop that business card down in there. Okay? All right. I'm going to check for any questions. And then we're going to get going tonight and get these made. So, all right. Let's see. Uh, yes. <laughs> hey, Ruth, how you doing? And Kim, you, how are you doing tonight, Kim? And yes, I love that green too, Sharon. You know that's one of my favorite colors. Um, no, it is not magnetic. It is the ruler. And it looks like it's, you know, when you look at it, it looks like it's magnetic, but it's not. And it just, it just pops open. I mean, who thinks of this stuff, right? I love it. So... Um, and Bianca, how you doing? Good, good evening, Bianca. You're the president of our local chapter of the WCAA. <laughs> yeah, you're right, Donna. I do have a ton of those beads. I'm going to have to have another project for them. <laughs> um, hey, Bill, how are you doing this evening? And Tamara, my friend Tamara from high school. Tamara, did you ever think that we would reconnect on a live broadcast like this? And you are very talented, too. And I've said that before. But again, thank you, everybody. Uh, keep those questions coming. Say hello to one another and share it out. But we're going to get going, like I said, tonight on this. So now I can talk about the supplies. And as I'm talking about the supplies, you all tell me, do you have somebody in mind that could use one of these? And shout it out because some of them might want to um, have some ideas, too. So, the supplies that you need are, and they're just very few. Of course, you need um, face fabric, very little of it. You need face fabric, you need a, um, a lining type fabric. And in these iP uh, iPad holders that I've made, I use a couple of different uh, stabilizers. I will tell you, um, in this particular uh, holder, I used a very soft, um, it was a very soft, natural, I think it's called warm and natural actually, like a little cotton inside. And it's not a real stiff stabilizer, um, but I felt like the silk needed a little bit of something, and so did the case. And it wasn't iron on, I just layered it in there. And I, I have to be honest with you, you know, the silk was so soft and so was the uh, warm and natural that I even, I took this out here, uh, the seam out where I put the um, the cording in and it was, um, it just keep, kept wrinkling on me. So I just kind of gave up. I guess, I guess I'll have to keep this one. <laughs> but just to let you know that that will, um, the, the silk, even though it's pretty, you're really going to have to work with it. And I think if I made another silk, holder, I would probably uh, use something, an iron on to help keep that stable up top. Okay. And like I said, on this one here, I added cording. And let me backtrack real quick because on this particular one, like I said, it was one piece and I wrapped it around and I added the center, the little flange, and then this one little piece, like a three inch piece in the center, just to give it a little um, extra for the width. And it, I think it turned out pretty good. Okay, so for the um, the green, I use this Pellon, 
as the stabilizer, and it's called fusible fleece. And so it's fusible, it's iron knot on one side. It's very, very thin, maybe a, a, not even an eighth, sixteenth of an inch. Um, but it was just enough to add a little oomph to the fabric. I would tell you that on the green one, that I uh, ironed on the pellon to the face as well as to the lining. And I found that it worked fine. Uh, but when it came to the little pouch, um, because the pocket in the pouch um, is a little bit smaller, it was just a little bit too thick. So I think if I would do, do it over, I would only iron on to say the face and not the lining. And that's what we're gonna do with this one tonight. We're gonna try it out with just um, ironing on the pellon to the face, not the lining. Okay, face fabric and um, lining fabric of your choice. Iron on pellon, uh, and they also are another kind of uh, stabilizer of your choice. And if you want to gussy yours up a little bit, um, you know, you can certainly pick out some trims if you want to. And like in this one here, let me see if I can show you. Um, you know, if you wanted to add a trim down uh, the center or something, you, you certainly could, you know, just change the look of it for the person that it's intended for. Okay, and of course the beads around the top, if you want to do that, um, and the cording as well. Okay, so we have that. Uh, I, I have this ribbon out to show you because this is what I used. If you decide you want to make a combo, if you want to add on the, um, you know, the little the little pouch, you can certainly uh, just put it on with ribbon. I know there might be some overachievers out there, and you might want to make your own little ribbon to go on uh, to latch it on with to join it. That's fine too. Whatever floats your boat, you do that. Okay. Um, and of course, we're going to need a older uh, tape measure. And I have two that I have um, cut up. You can see here. This one here is about an inch wide. And I think Kenny V must have given this one to me. I usually get his old ones. Um, and he would probably just cringe if he saw what I just did with them. And then I happen to have this one here too, and uh, <laughs> it's actually a rolly one, but it has a nice little pop to it, um, and, and it was a little bit smaller, and that's what I put into the little, the small pouch. So you can see you can use different sizes, or maybe you wanted to stick to the same, you know, one of the sizes. Whatever you have, use it, right? Okay, so I'll get these out of my way. And of course, a quilter's guide. I think every time we have a project, we need a quilter's guide of some sort. Straight pins, I did buy those Wonder Clips. Haven't used them yet, but I need my straight pins. I press the sewing machine, it does a straight stitch. We'll be fine. Scissors, you must have a pair of um, old crappy scissors because that, or even snips um, to cut the tape measure, but really you just need an old pair of scissors, unless you want to use this one. Okay. Um, duct tape or some kind of a tape because you can see here I did not want to lose um, this tape up inside of here I guess if I did I could take out you know unscrew it um, and pull it back out again but I didn't want to chance it so I just put a piece of duct tape around here and that's all you need the duct tape for so get it out of my way um, a pair of good fabric scissors fabric marker and like I said if you wanted to add the little um, the little small swivel D hook and uh, small swivel hook and D ring um, you can purchase that I just purchased mine at the local um, fabric store and I think that might be all the supplies um, that we need for this project okay so as you can see, I have um, already pre-cut uh, my fabrics tonight. Let me get everything out of my way. Um, and I'll tell you what I'm gonna do to these, how I curve these out in a few minutes. And if you have a pen and paper handy, 
um, and get ready to jot down these measurements. And um, every time I do this, I say I'm going to get a PDF out. And I, I wrote really great notes today. And so hopefully, keep your fingers crossed and poke me. I'll get you a PDF out there as well, okay? <laughs> Things get busy and I don't do that. All right, so um, go ahead and uh, write down these measurements for an iPad holder. Okay, let me go here. Um, these will finish at uh, nine, um, nine inches wide by 12 inches tall. So you're gonna cut two pieces of face fabric and they are going to, you're gonna cut them 10 inches wide and 15 inches long. So you have two for your face, two for your lining pieces, and this is um, just this is a linen fabric that I've used for the inside of the of the holder. And then you are going to cut, uh, like I said, tonight we're gonna to try this, uh, two pieces of your stabilizer. And there's quilted stabilizers out there and there's other types of pellons, but you choose the one that you'd like. Um, and this one, I, I'm really, really liking this one. But go ahead, and then you were um, two pieces to, and then iron them on to the back of um, the face. Okay, so did everybody get those measurements? Let me just double check. Okay, and uh, yes, Ruth, you said your daughter-in-law. That is great, yes, your daughter-in-law, your, your daughter, even the grandkids. How many times they're carrying their tablets around and you're thinking, oh my gosh, they're going to break those things. You know, they need a cover on them, right? <laughs> okay, so now that you have your four pieces, well, four pieces cut and then the, the backing on the face like this, you're going to uh, let me look for the top. And I did a little mark up right here at the top to note that that was the top on each of my face because I did do my, you know, my pattern. I cut to pattern. I knew what I wanted on the bottom, which I wanted on the top, and I knew what I wanted in the center. It's, I guess that's an ODC thing, right? <laughs> okay, so anyway, you're going to take your quilter's guide, and from the top, you're gonna measure down um, two and a half inches. Okay, so we've got two, one, two and a half. Line that up, and you're gonna, all you have to do is put a small little um, mark on each side. Okay, now I'm gonna do it. Now I'll make sure I have my top and two and a half. How many of you out there use these quilters guides as much as I do? It's really come in handy. And they square things up nicely. And then you're going to do the same to your lining. You have to start from the top and come on down. I've got a little piece of sticky from the label here. And just a little tick here. And then just a little tick here. And the same here. It's the same color as my tabletop and the lights coming down glaring on it so it's okay there we go and that's all that you need okay so now what we're going to do is we're going to take the two linings and we are going to um, actually Face, that's the back. We're going to face to face like this. It's just not face to face. It. I want to be able to see the markings. So, um, actually, it is. Act like I don't know how to sew here. It's because this is the same on both sides, and it's throwing me off. Okay, so we're going to put right sides together because that's what my home ec teacher always told me. <laughs> right. And Tamara, you know that because we have the same home ec teacher. Good old Mrs. Stetson. I tell you what, she pushed me 
And um, like I, I think I, you've all heard the story before, how in my senior year of high school, she made me make the drapes for the home ec room. That was my first introduction into window treatments. She says, you know, you're gonna make those, those drapes. And a big old long bank of windows too. And I'm like, what? Now I'm probably pinning a little bit too much. I don't know if you need to pin that much. Um, and then the same here, we're gonna take these two and put right sides together. And just line it up nice and even. Now, if I had unpackaged my Wonder Clips, I could use them, right? And hi, Margo. I see you're out there tonight, too. Uh, you need to be here. Um, Margo happens to be a cousin of mine, and she is going to join me when it gets closer to the holidays because we are going to do a family thing. Um, a lot of you like to... Um, a lot of you like to do tablescaping. I know last year it really popped and a lot of people were doing it. And so I thought it would be fun to have uh, my sweet cousin come on here with me. And we are going to um, make something special uh, for tablescaping. And so we gotta schedule that. And so you all stay tuned because it's gonna be a lot of fun. <laughs> yes, you should be here tonight. <laughs> Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this to the machine and I am going to begin stitching and I'm going to start right here at that little tick mark. Just going to do a straight stitch and I'm going to do about a quarter inch seam and I want this to hold really well because, um, let me get this here, let me take this off so I can keep picking this up and show you. Because this is going to be the area right up in here. So we, um, the area where, before it bends for the top, I should say, this right, right here. Uh, so we get, we're gonna back tack and we're gonna do a quarter inch seam and we're going to start, go around the side, the bottom, and up the top of the face fabric. And we're gonna do the same for the lining. We're gonna start at the little tick mark, go down the side, and I'm actually gonna do, right now, I'm gonna just mark maybe a what maybe three inch opening let's say i'm just gonna make two little tick marks you don't have to measure just guesstimate because as we come around we're going to stop and do a little uh, nice little tick there a back stitch and then we're going to come back over here because this is going to be our opening um to turn the whole um ipad holder okay so i'm going to jump on over to the machine Again, I'm just going to use a straight stitch. And if you just joined us tonight, thank you for being here. Uh, and say hello to one another and share it out so others can join in. And we are making a um, iPad, a snappy, stylish, or a stylish snappy um, iPad holder. Whichever way you want to say Okay, so again, I'm just gonna start, and let me get myself a good setting here. I don't need to make a tiny, tiny stitches. Just normal 3.5 will do. And again, I'm just gonna back tack, and just make sure that you're catching all the layers. Sometimes when you're you're working with uh, this iron-on. Uh, stabilizer it can shift everything can shift and you can't see what's underneath so just make sure and what I'm going to do here I'm going to stitch back stitch and I'm going to just go off you can leave your needle down if you want to and flip it and turn it and that's normally how I do things but I decided I wanted to make sure that these corners were going to stay nice and stable, uh, you know, and durable. So I'm just going to run it off. And just back stitch. Now on your face, you're just going to stitch completely across the bottom of your face fabric.
Now, if you were going to put in um, a little tab, <coughs> excuse me, for your um, to add another little pouch to it, you would probably want to do it right about now. You know, slip it in before you get to the um, the little tick mark. Because remember, the tick marks up to the top of your um, of, of the bag. And so you want to be able to put that um, little tab in, you know, right here on the side somewhere. And really, you know, back uh, stitch it so that it stays in there. Because it, it could get some lot of wear and tear or pulling on there. Okay. Okay. I did put a lot of pins in there, didn't I? I don't think we need all that. But it's best. Are you guys pinners? You pin a lot. Or do you do those wonder clips? Okay, now for the lining, same thing. I'm going to go in about that quarter of an inch. Start on that little tick mark. Stitch it down and back stitch it. You want that to be nice and sturdy. Same thing. I'm going to back stitch real well. How many of you sew on your home machine sometimes? I only do it when I'm on here. Pretty soon I'll have my industrials in the room. I don't know if you saw me earlier. My hand was going around because I was trying to find the, <laughs> the little button for the back stitching. I was going to push down on my side. Okay. Now remember my side. We need to leave, um, leave a space for the um, leave an opening at the bottom so we can turn everything. So but I'm going to give this a little back stitch because... You know what happens when things turn, it um, you can rip it. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna turn and come up the other side. It's pretty easy stitching, right? Mark again, and do the little back there. Okay, and again, I did not um, put stabilizer on the back piece. Okay, now if I take the pins out, I'll see if you all have any questions. <laughs> Let me see. I'll pull this over here, and let's see. And so, hi Melissa, how are you doing? And uh, Cecilia. And, and Donna says, no, I, I am not a pinner. And yeah, Sharon, you've been using the Wonder Clips. You, you're a quilter, and I think that um, Wonder Clips are really uh, have grown in popularity within, I think, the quilting community. Um, and you know, they're really, now here's the thing too, they're really great for us when we're doing, um, I lost my scissors. Uh, for us, when we're, when we're uh, making uh, panels or shades or any window treatments, with blackout. This way we're not piercing the fabric, right? And uh, what do you, Sharon, if you use them a lot or somebody else out there, how, are any of you quilters and uh, why do you think that the quilters are really using them um, more and more? I was just wondering. I, I think it's a great idea, but just didn't know. And then, um, oh yes, that's right. I, I you're right, Sharon. It's because people jab themselves and they get stuck in the blood. Yeah. This. Um, and Robin, she's, you said you're lazy. You use as few pins as possible. <laughs> I took a class years ago. It's been about 35 years ago. And we learned how to um, like sew without pinning. And it was pretty interesting, too. So Okay, so I'm just going to pull these pins out. Oh, we have time. I was always afraid of running out of time. That's why I did all this, some of this ahead of time. All right, let's go to our corners now. And let's just trim everything out. And don't let me, well, you guys can't, I can't hear you if you shout out to me. Um, I, I want to show you right now how to make those box bottoms if you want to do a little pouch with a boxed bottom. 
be, you know, it could be a makeup case, it could be a little glass case, it could be a phone case. Okay, see how I, let me get a close up here. Okay, so I've trimmed out, you know, I've trimmed the bottom here. So oh, here's my bottom and here's my, here's my side. So if you want this to be boxed out, just pinch that bottom corner and there's your point. Okay, just pinch it. And this is what I'm, I'm going to show you what you want to create. I don't know if you can see it here. See this seam down here? And then you see this little tiny seam. At least I can get close. There you go. And see that little seam that there? And don't probably don't look at that one because I didn't, I didn't match it up very well. But you will match the bottom seam with the side seam really well. But do you see how it boxes out? And all you have to do is just um, fold that in just like this. And what you'd really want to do you could tell I was busy rushing to get this done. Um, you could go ahead and stick a pin into your seam, right in the center of the seam, and come out the other side and find the center of your seam. And just kind of move it over. There you go. So see, I've got the pin, uh, I've got the pin coming out the center of the seam, and then I've got the pin inserting in the center of the seam. Then I will just take that and it, it should line up and I'll lay this down and you can just take your quilter's guide and you can just come in from the end however you however large you want that boxing to be. So you see if I'm coming in from like an inch from the end of that point then um, I'm going to have a pretty wide let's see if I get it right about there I've got almost like a two, well, maybe one to three quarter inch um, box at the bottom. Okay, and if you want a larger box, and of course you just keep, you open this up, and you can come in a little bit further. And then you're just gonna, uh, t with your marking pen, uh, fabric marker uh, that will fade. You can go ahead and just draw your line. Here, I'll just do this for you. Say that I want it that to be that large. You can just draw your line just like this, and then you'll take it over to the machine and you'll stitch, and then you will have your boxing at the bottom. Okay. How many of you done that before? I'm sure there's some of you out there that have, but for the, this iPad holder, I'm not going to box it. But like I said, I did for my little pouch, and I only had it wasn't a very big one for that. Right, so I've trimmed my uh, my corners, and my seams are good, so I'm not going to trim them. And I'm going to come to the bottom of my. Uh, let's see, make sure I got this. That is my bottom, and you can see mine got off a little kilter here, so I am going to. If I can just trim it, I still stitched it. Um, of course, it's cream on cream, so it's hard to see. how we much we love linen, right? It just seems to shift on us. Okay. These are scraps, everyone. I can't make anything out of them. I promise. <laughs> so they're in the trash. Okay. Okay. So the next step is we are going to go ahead and we are going to stitch uh, the lining to the face. Okay. So we're going to, this is, now this is the inside face and this is of course the face and we're just going to line this right up. And you can see that my little uh, purple mark is lining right up. See, let me pull this down a little bit. Give it a little tug, so they line up. So they line up together. I really like this method because it's the whole inside is going to be fully lined, and we're not going to have any seams, you know, any raw seams on the inside. And this you might want to go ahead and pin or use your wonder. Definitely use your wonder clips. There you go, Robin. I know you know. 
and and uh, and Donna out there, our non-pinners. Okay. I know, but we, like I said in that class I took, we learned how to really like put your fabric into like fours or fifths or whatever, and then just kind of um, pull it and make sure that it aligns right. With, I guess it's hard to explain. You have to see it. Do it, okay? Then I'm going to turn this over and I'm going to go ahead and pin the upside. Same way. This is such an easy little idle thing. Did you all know that, how many of you out there knew that those, um, Tape measures could clip, could pop like that. Okay, and then along the side, I'm going to take that. Where are you all coming from? I know where some of you live, but how about the rest of you? And if you have kids, are you glad that they're back in school? <laughs> I've been seeing all the, the pictures of the kids out there. Okay, so now I'm just going to take this over to the machine. And from one uh, of the little markings, for tick marks, I'm just going to still do my quarter inch seam all the way around. And I'm when I get to this side here, you're, you're going to see what I do. I'm just going to lift it up and move it. And then continue around the other end. Now, if you want to add um, any beads or cording, um, now would be the time to go ahead and do it, uh, because you would you would go ahead and stitch it in to um, this area that we're getting ready to stitch. So that's what I do with my uh, cording. I stitched my cording onto the um, face fabric because it was the one that was a little bit more durable. And then uh, for the green, I went ahead and I stitched on the beads. Now the beads, I did not carry it around the side. I only did them across on the top. But with the cording, as you can see here, I took the cording completely around the whole top. And it, it, it's, it looks okay. Um, but I think that if I would do it again, that I would go ahead and just do it across the top like I did um, with the beads on here. It's not necessary to have them on the side, unless you really want the cordy on the side. Totally up to you when you make your own. Okay, I'm going back to the machine, and I'm going to stitch around the top. And so Jacqueline, you're coming in from the UK. Hey! And Margot's from Kerry. It's good to see where everyone comes from. Now, what do you all do? How many of you have um, custom drapery work rooms? How many of you like to do crafts? How many of you have quilters? Let me know. Let me know. I know what some of you do. Okay, so I am going to start at my first little tick mark. And I'm going to pull this back down a little bit. So I'm going to stitch. That's there. Okay, and I'm going to get real close to that bumping area. And then I'm going to back tack because it's going to need some extra oomph in there. And same as before. Like I said, you can take, when you get to this point, you can certainly leave your needle down. Uh, mine just took an extra stitch. If you have a machine that they need, or you can put the, the needle down, and then you can pick it up and pivot and continue, uh, pick it up and pivot, continue sewing. But you know, for this for this particular project, I I just ran my stitching off the end, and then I just back tacked it. You do what you would normally do. Okay. 
Well, that's what happens when you leave the needle down, too, and you take it out. <laughs> And Sharon, I can see you. You said you're you're um, a quilter, a crafter, a workroom, and a, a nana sewer. Yes, you are. Got a new little grandson, and you've been making some really really cute outfits for him. We got a cook one, nana, nana. However you want to pronounce it, both ways, I guess. Sewers out there. I'm at the point where I just think I need to learn how to sew. So I was like, here's this project. You need to learn how to do it. Most of them can, so. Now you think your your um your holder's gonna go to somebody like a a, a child, then go ahead and don't be afraid to go back and reinforce these seams all the way around. There's nothing wrong with that. Um because sometimes these I I think these gonna get some good wear and tear. And I would think that even though some of it is drapery fabric, um, you do not have to send it off to the dry cleaner. So I think you could just throw something like this right into the washer, dryer. Right. What do you think? Okay, so now watch this. I don't know if you can see, whenever I get to that mark, and it's almost, it's fat up in there right now because of the, the different layers. When you get to that bump area, just go over that bump maybe an eighth of an inch so you, it's okay. Back tack it. And then what you're going to do, you're going to pick it up. Take it out from underneath the needle. You're going to flip this backwards. And then you're going to flip all of it. Um, just flip all of it backwards. Maybe if I can um, show you what I just did. Yeah, see I just took and we just stitched this area here and I just lifted it out from underneath the machine and it's almost like a T at the top and I just lifted and pushed this back so now I can go ahead and stitch the other side. And you can see that little tick that you took if you went over the bump, you can see it. It's just a smidge. Okay. And I'm gonna back tack here, I'm gonna reinforce that edge have a wonder clips I'd be taking them out too. <laughs> Thanks for saying that Sharon. I forgot I did hear a quilter. Um, I, I was in a quilt shop last week and she was talking about the wonder clips and that's what she said too and I forgot. So yeah, I guess we need to go to wonder clips folks. So and Jacqueline you said you do curtains and soft furnace machines and you love to quilt and you craft in your spare time. <laughs> that's awesome. I think most of us wish that we had more time to um, uh, do fair projects and have fun. I know I do. Sometimes I just have all these ideas in my head and I just want to stop and do them. I'm actually um, working on a new method to hide pinholes in Blackout. So I'm kind of on that kick. I started it a few weeks ago. I put a teaser out there to you all, I'm sorry, and that I didn't get back to you on it because I thought about it some more and I still want to perfect it. So it is in the works and um, hopefully very, 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 very soon because I really think you're going to love it. I love it so far, but I want to make up a whole shade and that way show you. So, Okay, so... Um, do this okay so now we've stitched the whole top and I'm going to go back and I'm going to um, trim those corners because we all know just like in a pillow sometimes make sure I get all my pins out uh, those corners can be um, really thick sometimes and take up some space that we want so I'm just going to trim them David, you're from Greenville. David's my baby brother. Baby brother. <laughs> but he's a good one. He's a keeper. Okay. So. 
So yes, I'm really excited about this new method that I've been working on. And I really think it's going to work really, really well. And like I said, it's going to be coming out soon, as soon as I get that shade made to show it to you. And um, for all of you out there, I don't know how many of you uh, make a lot of shades, but I do have two classes coming up. I have one I had, uh, September 27th through 29th. It's a basic, sh I, well, it's kind of, it's level one shades, and uh, the students make three shades, and Ruth, you've made them, a uh, rib shade, a, um, a stationary shade, and then also uh, like the two function shades, and then a regular flat bottom function shades. And then on October 4th and 6th, we're going to take it up a, not a notch. We're going to gussy them up a little bit, and uh, we're going to do motorization. I'm going to do the blackout method. We're going to do reverse mount with balances over the top and then add some trimmings and things on there. So that is October 4th and 6th right here in Apex, North Carolina. I'll be teaching that. And then I think Kathy Tucker is out there and she is going to be coming in uh, the end of October and she's going to be teaching a four day class called From Design to Installation. And it is going to be thorough. She taught it at the, uh, uh, there was a, a school out there years ago called CHF. And she we taught that class, and it's awesome. I mean, from you'll be working with actual clients, designing, making, and working with uh, a local designer. We have a really good one in mind, and he has said yes to do this. Um, and so we're just waiting for our students to um, sign up and come and join us for that class. So, okay, I'm going to... Um, open this up at the bottom. See, I did make, I did stitch it a little bit too much, I think, but we're just going to flip this. So I don't know about you, but I make Roman shades, Roman shades, Roman shades, and more Roman shades. And I don't think there are two that are like some with smiles, uh, some flat, some stationary, some motorized, some with a chain. Uh, you know, the, it is just uh, flat bottom ones, London's, and so yes, and then that, um, the take it a step up class, the next level class, we are going to do uh, either a London shade, uh, I think we're going to do a London shade in that class, because they're coming back, and they're beautiful too, they're one of the, um, the treatments that I love the most, and like I said, yes, yeah, uh, Kitty B's working tonight, <laughs> But yeah, we, um, and actually Kenny V is teaching two classes. They're almost full. So if you know anybody who wants to become an installer, you can make a really good living and you'll be in great demand. I promise you. I don't care where you are. I don't care how many uh, installers there are in your area. Great demand. And, uh, we actually have two female students coming, um, in September, I believe, to learn from Ken, taking an install, install class. And then he has two more classes He's got the pet professional installer program coming up October 18th and 19th. And then he has how to install blind shades and shutters uh, on the 20th and 21st. So two uh, really good back-to-back -back classes. Uh, I had to finally book them because so many people have been reaching out for training. Um, it's going crazy. And we're actually, he's actually going to Pennsylvania. Um, we got a busy fall. Um, and going to be teaching um, a class up there for the WCA chapter. So it's going to be really good. We were doing some filming the other day for it and uh, because we're going to have some stations. And this way they can, if he can't get to them, they can watch what he has at that station for them to do until he can get around to them. So it's going to be fun. Okay, so here is the bottom of uh, the lining and I'm going to go ahead and just fold it in to one another, fold it into itself. Let me get you a close up. Any questions? You guys are quiet tonight. So, okay. So I'm just going to, I just kind of finger pressed it because it is um, linen. I could do that. This is the bottom of the inside of the lining and so I am just going to run that right underneath the machine. Now you can certainly uh, hand sew it if you want to, but why? You know, just, it's gonna um, be down in the bottom 
and you want this to be durable so just go ahead and stitch it but if you want to hand sew it go right ahead you guys have some scraps in mind or an iPad holder how many of you have iPads Do you have to come twice, Ruth? <laughs> no, actually Ruth is one of the students. You do not. Um, he does do private training. And so Ruth and, um, and her partner are going to be um, having some private training. So no, you do not. Um, <laughs> there we go. You do not have to come twice, Ruth. I think I probably should have poked that through before I turned it. I was too busy talking. I'm trying to watch my time. Okay. No matter how much I try to time myself, it just doesn't work. Okay. Now normally we would take this and uh, press it with an iron. I did not bring my iron into this room. But right now what I'm doing is I'm pulling out these corners. And for any of you interested in the classes, I actually went ahead and loaded the links to our different website. Ken has a different website for me. Um, if you or you or any you know anybody who would like to take those classes, just go to our website. My website is Live with Sandra V. And Ken's is the name of his company, which is installwhatsnew.com. So, let's know. We had a, a, good, a good class. We had a good Roman Shea class earlier this year. The students were great and ecstatic and did just pristine work. I was so pleased. Yeah. Excited for the next two. And like I said, here on Live with Sandra V, we're going to be doing some more window treatments as well as some tablescaping. Um, and I am going to be doing, um, I, there's something I really want to do. I love pom-poms. So it has something to do with pom-poms. And it has something to do with Roman shades. So it, it'll be in a few weeks. So just stay tuned and I'll let you know. Who else does Roman shades? Do you love to do Roman shades? I actually did. I didn't, always. I shied away from them for the longest time because of the new standards, but now I love them. Okay, I have picked out my corners. Uh, any questions? Okay, so now I'm just gonna push this through. Okay, it's coming together. We're almost there, folks. I'm just gonna push this down the inside. And you can see I did not, like I said, I didn't put, I just decided not to um, do anything fancy with this one. I wanted to make it simple because to me, this could go for some young, um, young man, a teenager. Okay. So now I'm just going to fold this down. Okay. And I'm going to pin. And this, I think you're going to want to pin. Y'all still with me? And normally you would, at this point, you'd really get a nice steam iron and go ahead and steam it. Okay. And you're just gonna um, pin down that flap. I'm fussy about my corners. I really want them to be nice and sharp. Do you all um, pull your corners out as well? How do you do it? A lot of you use those purple things. Okay. That's quiet tonight. Okay. And I want to make sure that this is, they're the same length on the side here.
here. Then you can just take a measure. Right this way. And you can see I have that 12 inches. It's about a two inch flap there. It's about two inches and it comes out to, actually it's coming out to, if I had it pressed, it would come out to my 12 inches on the bottom. Okay, I'm now gonna take this back over to the sewing machine and I am going to um, stitch right along uh, this edge before I would stitch in the ditch, but this one here you can stitch right along this edge. Okay, okay, can't still here. And then um, Robin said, I'm making my machines, but I get four when I have too many. Yeah, I do not like repetition. Do not like repetition. Okay. Now this might e even be easier. Um, earlier we were stitching them from the inside and I probably should have turned it inside out. But if it gives me um, a fit, I will tell you that you can and actually, because I'm on my home machine, I can do this. I can stick this right up in here. This is, I guess, the benefit of having a home machine. That you can take that front off there. Okay. And I'm just going to stitch it. Yeah, I'm with you, Robin. I, I'm not one on repetition. Um, I want to make one, maybe two or something. That's it. We're almost there, folks. Has anybody made their fabric bowl or the awning? But we did. Now, when you get to where the uh, the seam is, you might want to do a little back stitch there because um, this is an embroidery machine too, and it gets into this embroidery mode on me, uh, and it gets stuck. But um, because we're going to be putting the, uh, oh no, I don't break my needle. Um, okay, we're going to be putting the tape measure in here. Okay, leave it right there. I'm going to pull this around and I'm going to lift that foot and put that end in there. Line it up. Sorry, this, this is where the industrials work better. I'm just going to have to hand do it to get past it. Okay. Now you could even embroider. If you wanted to, you know, you can embroider name here or put another... Uh, clear pan, uh, solid panel down the front and embroider someone's initials or their name. stitched it together even with my talking uh, it didn't take too long and I've already cut my um, skull now we're going to take um, <laughs> yeah I still hear my dog is snoring so loudly she had to turn the volume up and then not yet on the fabric bowl but look, yes oh would you please show me your fabric bowls and stuff okay Real quick, and then we're almost done. Uh, on your tape here, like I said, you want to get a piece of duct tape because the minute you pull these out um, and you cut it, you don't want it to go back up in there. Okay, so I always take a piece of duct tape, and if I was to cut this with your old scissors, you were just going to cut you a piece of duct tape you know, stick it up into here so it doesn't go back up in there. 
and then you're going to measure off what you need and for this particular iPad holder these are what did I say eight and um, eight and a half we're going to cut these eight and a half wide and I'm going to do a close-up because you could see that uh, once I cut them you kind of round out the edges so that they don't poke through the fabric and then put some uh, duct tape over the ends and do it on both ends. Okay, let me get all this out of the way. There's a lot of stuff on this table. Okay. And then you're just going to take the tape measure and see how it where it bellies out. Um, I haven't feel how I did this. Okay, so you're going to put the belly out piece toward the inside. So again, do you have, see the curve? And so you're just going to stick this in the side. And you're just going to slide it in all the way through. Take the other one, same thing, to where it, it bows and the bowing goes to the inside. And you're just going to stick it right into here. Okay, and just kind of smooth it in. Smooth it in, pull it out. And then you can go back and on the sides here, just push it in. And on the sides, go ahead and you could tack it. You can hand stitch it down. Okay, you can see where the hole is there. Go ahead and hand stitch it. And hand stitch the other side. And then your pouch will be done. There you go. So I hope that you all will enjoy making them and giving them as gifts or even keeping one um, for yourself. And if you do, please share um, out there on Live with Sandra V because I always like to see how you all have um, used your creative mind to come up with something lots of fun. Like I said, don't be afraid to embellish them and make them your own. So thanks again, everyone. It's been an enjoyable evening. I ha love having each and every one of you out there every week. And I hope to see you in, well, next week. Don't know what I have in store yet. Let's keep the fingers crossed that it's that Roman shade I'm talking about. Um, but, yep, yeah, I don't, I hope I've said hello to everybody. If I've missed you um, and you've made a comment, I will go back later and say hello to you. Okay, everyone, have a good evening. See you next week. Bye.